OK, uh, can you hear me? Uh, great. Uh, thanks for the introduction. So without further ado, um, OK, fully morphic encryption, fully homomorphic, fully homomorphic, fully homomorphic, fully homomorphic. So um, yeah, um, so I, I'll start with a, a bit of an introduction on, on fully homomorphic encryption, which uh, um, those of you uh, who are there uh, at the tutorial session yesterday uh, will probably find uh, somewhat, uh, but hopefully not fully redundant. Um, and then I'll uh, say a few more precise words about uh, the fully homomorphic scheme over the integers from uh, Eurocrypt last year, uh, which we are uh, improving in some sense. And uh, then I'll give uh, an overview of our uh, contribution, though I probably won't be able to go in as much detail as I wish uh, I could. Um, so, uh, fully homomorphic encryption. So, basically, homomorphic encryption. Um, um, an encryption scheme is homomorphic when you can uh, do uh, uh, operations to, uh, when you can compute on encrypted data. So for example, uh, you, can, you have a multiplicatively homomorphic scheme, uh, for example, textbook RSA, in which you can uh, compute uh, the ciphertext um, associated with uh, the product of two messages. Uh, knowing a ciphertext associated with those two messages without uh, knowing, without having to decrypt or knowing the secret key. So it can be publicly done. You have uh, additively homomorphic schemes and uh, fully homomorphic schemes is when you can do both uh, additions and multiplications. And that was an open problem until uh, Gentry's breakthrough uh, in 2009. Um, so we're restricting ourselves with, uh, to, to encryption of bits. Uh, so we are considering a ciphertext associated with the, uh, the encryption of either zero or one. And uh, that's uh, what we're trying to compute on. So um, given encryptions of uh, uh, one bit and another, we want to be able to compute an encryption of, uh, uh, of either the XOR of those bits or uh, their, their end, their product, without knowing the, the private key. Uh, what that allows us to do is uh, compute essentially any uh, Boolean circuit on uh, encrypted data, at least a Boolean circuit with a, a polyon nearly many gates. And uh, uh, so you can compute pretty much any function on uh, uh, families of bits um, uh, on encrypted data without knowing uh, this, the private key. So uh, uh, an example, uh, a use case for uh, homomorphic encryption um, given by uh, uh, my advisor, who's more uh, business-minded than I am, uh, is the following. So you have, imagine you have a, a software that uh, predicts the, the, the stock price uh, of a company based on a uh, number of uh, data about it. And I, I want to know the, the future stock price of my company, but I don't want to disclose uh, confidential information about it, and you don't want to give me uh, your software uh, because uh, it's worth a lot of money, I don't know. And uh, so we can do that with the uh, homomorphic encryption. Uh, I encrypt all my uh, secret data with a um, fully homomorphic encryption scheme, and I send it to you in, in encrypted form, and you, you process those uh, inputs um, in encrypted form using uh, homomorphically, applying your software homomorphically, and you send me back the result, still encrypted, and I decrypt it myself. You didn't learn anything about my data, and I uh, didn't learn anything about your software. Uh, okay, so um, uh, more generally, so, so maybe you can uh, hope to achieve uh, secure cloud computing, things like that. And um, uh, more importantly for some of us, uh, it's, uh, there's very nice uh, mathematics uh, in this um, uh, topic. Um, so th there are not many examples of a um, fully homomorphic encryption scheme yet. Um, there's the, the, the scheme, the original scheme by Gentry, and there's a somewhat arguably uh, uh, conceptually simpler scheme uh, by uh, uh, Van Dijk, Gentry, Halevi, and Vaikut Tadatan, uh, presented at Eurocrypt last year, which we are uh, extending somewhat. And that, that was about it. Uh, uh, until a few months ago, you, you will uh, see interesting, exciting new stuff in the next talk. 
Um, and those uh, schemes are um, quite far from practical. So for example, if, if I take the, the, the scheme from uh, Euroclip last year, if you want a reasonable ne level of security, uh, the uh, rule of thumb uh, public key size would be something like uh, two to the six T bits, um, which I can't store on my personal computer. Um, and uh, for gentry scheme, it's a bit, probably a bit difficult to uh, give hard to suggest actual parameters. Uh, so th there has been a, uh, an effort to, to uh, maybe not make this actually practical, but uh, uh, progress towards that goal. Uh, so for gentry scheme, that does uh, uh, improvements by uh, Smart and Verkotren last year at PKC, and um, Gentry and Halevi used that and many uh, uh, clever tricks um, at Eurocrypt uh, to, to actually implement uh, a Gentry scheme. And they, they obtained an implementation um, with public key size two gigabytes and ciphertext refresh uh, 30 minutes. So that's ciphertext refresh, something that you want uh, to do basically for every uh, multiplication between encrypted bits. So that, that's still far from practical, but at, at least you can implement it. And uh, uh, this work is about doing the same for uh, the schemes of our integers. Um, so uh, we propose uh, um, parameters that uh, give you a public key size of 800 megabytes um, and ciphertext refresh in 15 minutes. But as uh, uh, Shai was saying in his uh, uh, session yesterday, um, the, the parameter choice m might actually uh, be uh, somewhat uh, um, uh, overconfident. So, so I'll, I'll discuss that a bit later. Um, uh, okay, and uh, practicality, uh, um, uh, we're getting much, uh, much closer to it uh, with uh, uh, very recent uh, new works, uh, especially about uh, fully morphic encryption without bootstrapping, but uh, uh, it's not my place to uh, tell you about it. So um, how do you build those traditional types of uh, uh, traditional data to two years old, but uh, of fully morphic encryption schemes? Um, you start from something called a somewhat homomorphic encryption scheme, um, in which you can apply polynomials on your uh, binary data, but only polynomials up to a bounded degree. Um, so you, your ciphertexts are uh, somewhat noisy in some sense, and the noise increases uh, when you uh, apply homomorphic operations. And when the, the noise becomes too large, so when the polynomial has a too large degree, um, uh, the noise becomes too large and uh, you can't decrypt anymore. No, the, the, they can't decrypt correctly anymore. So, and then if uh, you can fit uh, in that uh, uh, bound on the degree, you can fit the decryption function for your scheme, then you can hope to apply it homomorphically and then in some, decrypt uh, in a homomorphic way. So that, that's the idea. Um, you, so you have your decryption circuit, which uh, uh, upon... Uh, giving ciphertext bits and secret key bits gives you uh, the plain text. Um, so the ciphertext uh, uh, for a, a, a public person, it's uh, public data. Then you, you can give it encryption of secret key bits. And you put that in the decryption circuit uh, and apply the homomorphic evaluation function. And what you get, if uh, the decryption circuit is low depth enough, if uh, it fits, um, in your somewhat homomorphic scheme, what you get, the result, is um, an encryption of uh, the result here, so an encryption of a plain text bit, and that's uh, a ciphertext for the, uh, the, the, the original plain, the, the, the origin, a new ciphertext for the original message. That's a refresh, and hopefully uh, the noise here might be lower than the noise you started with, and that allows you uh, to do more homomorphic operation. So that's uh, the, the, the great idea by Gentry. Um, yeah, so that's the idea. Um, the, the, the problem here that uh, you, you have to uh, obtain a, a decryption circuit of a, uh, sufficiently low depth uh, to fit everything. Um, okay, uh, now I turn to the, the somewhat homomorphic part of uh, the, the scheme from Eurocrypt last year. So um, uh, your keys, 
your, your key, uh, the, your public key, uh, is, uh, consists of uh, a set of uh, multiples of a certain, or, or, say, odd prime p, uh, of near multiples, let's say, so very large numbers, which are, which are multiples of p plus some noise. And uh, so I'll give a slightly simplified description in which you also give an exact multiple. Um, so then, how do you encrypt the message with that? Uh, you pick your message, you add some uh, even uh, uh, small noise to it, and you, get, uh, and you add a, a secret uh, random uh, subset, uh, subset sum of uh, uh, your public key elements. And how you do, can you decrypt that? Then uh, uh, that's a, a all mod uh, x0, and I can reduce it mod p, since uh, x0 is a, a multiple, of, multiple of p. And I, uh, and I see that uh, uh, the ciphertext is the message plus uh, something uh, even. And if uh, uh, the, the noise is uh, uh, smaller than p, say much smaller than p, then uh, the, the equality, um, um, uh, when I reduce mod p, I have the equality of all the integers, and I can uh, take the, uh, uh, the result mod 2 and uh, uh, recover my uh, number m. Uh, so to, to decrypt, I'm, uh, uh, I always have to uh, take care about the size of the noise. Uh, so it's easy to see that uh, uh, to do addition and multiplication, as I can simply uh, add and multiply ciphertext um, mod x0 as long as the noise uh, remains small enough. Um, uh, okay, and uh, I have a number of multiplications that are possible. That is about uh, the size of the, the size of p uh, divided by the size of the noise. Um, so if, if we estimate exactly parameters involved, um, you, you see in the, the original paper suggested that uh, the public key side should be about uh, lambda to the 10, where, where lambda is your security parameters. That's uh, 2 to the 62 for uh, 72 bits of security, which is our, our target. It's not very large, but that's um, our modest target for now. So uh, what we want to do here is uh, reduce it to something more manageable. Um, uh, so to do that, uh, we take uh, uh, our public key elements and uh, a smaller number of them and uh, multiply them two by two. So uh, the public key elements will we, we look like, uh, we look like uh, x, i, x, j. And uh, um, to uh, encrypt, you do a subset sum, not of uh, the public key elements, but of uh, the uh, two by two products of them. And that will, that will look something like that. Um, and uh, if you analyze um, your uh, various constraints, you find that uh, uh, the number of uh, uh, pairs of elements you can take is about lambda to the square, lambda square. So your, your public key will be uh, uh, two, bet, two beta elements of uh, size uh, gamma, which was uh, lambda to the, f to, to the fifth power. So it's... Uh, lambda 2 times lambda 5, lambda 7, uh, compare, so it's still pretty large, but uh, compared to uh, lambda 2 to 10, it's a significant improvement. Um, so we, we have to, to prove that uh, this uh, construction is secure. Um, and uh, the proof uh, goes mostly the same way as uh, in the Eurocrypt paper, except that um, we have to, to show at some point that... Uh, 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 since it's in indistinguishability, it's semantic security, we have to show that something is uh, statistically close to uniform. Uh, so in uh, the Europe paper, it's done using the leftover hash lemma uh, applied to a family of uh, uh, functions, of uh, uh, universal functions of that form, which is linear, which is pretty classical. And uh, to extend it, since we have a quadratic uh, way of generating our um, um, ciphertext, uh, it's uh, um, functions, a family of, uh, say, universal hash function of that form, which is uh, quadratic and uh, no longer linear. So uh, we have to prove that it's not exactly a universal fu hash function, but it's close enough to apply a slightly modified leftover hash lemma. Uh, and we can actually do that. It's a pretty nice math. Uh, so you have to count points on a hyperbolic uh, quadratics in uh, uh, over z uh, to the uh, uh, mod q0. 
And that's probably the, the main contribution, technical contribution of that paper. Uh, so what are our hypotheses? So um, the, the scheme I've just described, uh, so both our simplified uh, scheme from Eurocrypt and uh, our paper, that's based on uh, the partial approximate common uh, divisor problem. So you have uh, uh, plenty of near multiple of some num number p and an exact multiple. Um, that's our um, problem. And so we suppose that this is hard. And uh, the original paper uh, was slightly more complicated uh, in its formulation, but was by based on the general approximate uh, common divisor problem where you don't get, give uh, the, the adversary an exact multiple. So, uh, of course, the, the second one looks uh, stronger than the first, and, uh, but uh, we didn't know uh, before like uh, last week <laughs> that um, any better attack on the second problem than on the first. So uh, it was uh, all very nice. Uh, unfortunately, um, uh, it seems that uh, um, it doesn't quite work like that. Uh, okay, so um, th that was for the somewhat homomorphic part. Uh, and you have also um, a squashed uh, um, um, the extended part that uh, brings everything to fully homomorphic. So I, I don't have time to um, go into details there, but uh, uh, there are some problems uh, because um, even if you, if you analyze things precisely, um, if you uh, do things exactly like uh, in the Eurocrypt paper, then uh, you, your uh, key grows again to something like lambda to the eight, uh, whereas uh, in the somewhat homomorphic scheme it was lambda to the seven, so we have a problem. So there are various tricks, uh, mostly um, uh, borrowed to uh, Gentry and Halevi's paper uh, at Eurocrypt this year uh, to uh, shrink the, the key uh, in this uh, squashed part as well, uh, which I won't go into. Uh, then the, uh, we try to propose concrete parameters. So the, the idea was to um, find, uh, enumerate all the attacks available on uh, those problems um, uh, and uh, see uh, how they work so that we can pick the smallest possible uh, parameters um, to avoid them. Uh, okay, so there are several attacks, brute force on, on the noise, uh, um, orthogonal lattice-based attack on the GACD problem, uh, lattice-based attack on the, the parse, sparse subset some problem, and uh, this gave us uh, some parameters. In particular, as I was saying, the, the 72 bits of security uh, gave you a public key size of 800 bits, um, recruption operation on, of 15 minutes, etc. Unfortunately, so uh, last week that there was a, a paper uh, on ePrint uh, published by uh, Cheng and Nguyen uh, that uh, pretty much broke those uh, parameters by finding a, a more efficient uh, attack on PACD and also on J JACD, but uh, not as uh, efficient. And so um, uh, our stated uh, security level is not uh, as, uh, uh, as uh, large as we, was, we were hoping. So uh, for instead of 72, for example, it's less than uh, 67. So we would have to uh, hike uh, the parameters here a little to, um, uh, to reach the same level of security uh, as uh, Gentry and Halevi, and that would make uh, our parameters less, our key size, et cetera, less competitive. But, and there's also a new attack that uh, you might heard, have heard uh, uh, in the REM session yesterday. But anyway, um, I think this shows uh, reasonably, even if we have to, to hide parameters a bit, that uh, the, the um, scheme from Europe Group last year um, uh, can be compressed to something that at least you can implement on a, a standard PC. Uh, it's not quite practical yet, not near practical yet, but uh, there's uh, ongoing progress, so you have uh, exciting new developments around the uh, without bootstrapping uh, uh, stuff that uh, you might even uh, apply over the integers. That's work in progress. Um, you can compress uh, public keys much further. If you, if you look at uh, uh, ePrint right now, there does a, a paper. We, we do it um, by a factor of like 200 um, and some more um, um, technical contributions. Um, on the other hand, there's also uh, progress on attacking the, the, the underlying uh, hard problems. So, so then there's a sort of race here. Thank you. So we're on a tight schedule, so we'll move uh, uh, directly to the next talk. Uh,